sustainability fans, and a welcome back to Munich, Germany. We are here almost to the conclusion of day one of our two days of coverage at Solanus' Celosphere event. My name is Savannah Peterson with my co-host Rob Spetsche. This has been so cool, so excited about our next segment. We just talked supply chain, now we're talking sustainability. You've got some background in this. Yeah, I mean, I think, again, knowing from family members who work in this domain, sustainability is about where do things come from, the processes, and a number of different things that really go into this to help people understand to be more efficient and make those trade-offs that can help the planet. So. Yeah, absolutely, which is definitely a big theme here. You know, thank you so much for taking the time. Very busy week for you. you got hackathons, got stage time. We're going to dive into all of it. But real quick, because I think you have one of the cooler jobs, coolest <laughs> jobs, I should say. They're all pretty cool, but coolest jobs uh, at Solanus. Tell us about what it means to be leading the sustainability charge. Happy to meet you. So I joined Solonis about seven years ago. So I'm one of the, I would say, older Solonis, if you want to take that. And um, I'm leading our sustainability team, and that means I both suffer and solve. So because on one hand, I'm responsible for making Solonis a sustainable company and making sure we're a trusted supplier. So I also take care of our sustainability reporting, our carbon footprint, supplier engagement, impact days, you name it. There is a ton of things ongoing. But I'm lucky because we only have 3,000 people. We don't have a physical supply chain. So yes, there is challenges, but we also know that we can spend a bit of more time on creating a bigger impact. And that's where we solve and where we build solutions together with our customers and partners to make supply chains more sustainable and to help them use process intelligence to decarbonize faster and with more fun. Let's dig in there a little bit. How can we use process intelligence specifically to be more sustainable and impact those numbers? Yes, happy that you asked. So let me break it down because I think again, sustainability sometimes a little bit of education can be needed or like people have no yes, idea please. of what this whole concept is about. So I would say in this time that we call the regulatory maze, you know, no way out, all abbreviated, intertwined. Companies need to do three fundamental things to be successful and sustainable. So first is they need to comply and report. So they need to unify data across their business. Now the beauty is sustainability metrics have always been cross-functional, cross-processes, cross-departments. Then the second piece is once they have the data, they need to set realistic goals. So they need to understand both how they're doing when it comes to sustainability, but also in business. Otherwise, what's the point? So understanding those gaps. And then the last part is taking action, obviously. Orchestrating that across teams and departments, making decisions that are both good for the business and the planet. And now, because of that cross-functional nature, I would say, of sustainability metrics, Process Intelligence and the Salonis platform can uniquely help with that because we can basically unify the sustainability data across the business and then we can link that data to the people in the business and the various departments and we can provide that single source of truth for both business performance and sustainability performance at the same time. And because we embed basically sustainability metrics like emission factors, supplier ratings, you name it, into the day-to-day -day operations, we make sure that everyone in the organization, be it someone with sustainability in the title or not, take action and make decisions that prioritize decarbonization and business performance. And I think we, and we were talking with Peter about supply chain just before this, and I think one of the things that I, I dove in a little bit with him was the fact that, like, the big, the big topic that uh, people get wrapped around in the U.S., and again, we don't do it as quite as effectively as the EU, so hopefully that'll change. You know, we're, we're trying, but the more we talk about it, but things like scope three and, and, and being able to understand those intangibles within scope three, do you see people like not only yourself within Salonis, because that happens to probably be a lot of your carbon footprint yeah. in through scope three, how do you see alone is helping other organizations because you're kind of, you know, the first in on those processes with Solonis. Yes, exactly. And you already named the point of what is important about Scope 3. We call it the holy grail in sustainability because it's the hardest to solve. 
Barcelona is 90% of our carbon footprint, so I get the challenge. Ooh, wow. um, and for most of the companies, it depends a bit on the industry, I would say, but for most of them, it's also between 70 and 90% of the carbon footprint, so quite material. The problem with scope 3 is, for much of it to be calculated in the right way, you need what we call primary data. So you need to ask your suppliers, and you need to ask your customers, potentially, and you need to ask others. It's hard. It's data you don't own. Um, and so there's a multitude of ways of how we go about that, also with several of our customers in different industries. Mm, let me take an example. Dürer, a customer manufacturing in Germany, quite strong. They have a big chunk of the carbon footprint in scope 3. They do know they have to understand it, and so they work with us in procurement specifically. Now, what you have to understand in scope 3, procurement is actually oftentimes the victim or the hero. Pick whatever you want. And they have to go in and basically first do an assumption. So they can do like spent-based data. We call it secondary. We want to talk, you know, for real here. Um, and that can be done by using the existing data that they have connected to with Salonis already in the procurement process, and they can add emission factors right. and understand that. And for that, you know, we can use AI, we can use data matching, we build up that data model, we enrich that, you know, process digital twin, as we call it. So that is where it starts. Then we can obviously say we put in some supplier ratings as well, Salonis partners with Ecovades or Integer Connect on those. So that is also covered. And now comes the challenging part, ask your suppliers directly. And here, Salonis and Process Intelligence can help them send requests to suppliers in an automatized fashion. Can it be a survey? Can it reach out to them directly? We've heard about networks this morning in the keynote. That will also play a big part in that. And then we unify all of the data in the procurement process. And going back to Dürer, they have this situation. So they used Integrity Next to bring in the supplier ratings and some emission assumptions. Then they used Climatic for the emission factors. And then when it all wasn't precise enough, they were able to dig down because with Salonis they could see both the procurement data and that sustainability performance and understand how to fill those data gaps. And what they do next, and I think that's really interesting, they combine that with other procurement performance metrics for a total cost of ownership approach, as we call it. But the idea here is really to understand a supplier should be very sustainable, but it should also be on time. It, there should also be the best price. Like, we know that. So how can we combine that all in one single source of truth and make decisions that take everything into account? Each of those components you just mentioned there, affordability, efficiency, and, and, and sustainability are, are incredibly important as we build the companies of the future, and, and you get to see a lot of that action. I'm very curious what it looks like for you when you first start working with a company and embarking on that sustainability journey, because I can imagine there's a lot that gets uncovered. What are, what's your advice for companies who are, say, just now setting their ESG goals or thinking about how AI might play into that? How do you get them warmed up and on the right path? Yeah, yeah. So I think the big challenge we have now with sustainability, and that has changed, by the way. Like, if you had asked me two years ago, I would have said, yeah, every company wants to be very sustainable. Everyone has those ESG goals. They've all set up departments or good. Now we have AI, different business priorities. We are living in, in a time of crisis, to be honest, especially in Europe. It is a bit of a challenging environment. And so now companies face the fact that they have to solve all those other things first before they can think about something more long-term like sustainability. I mean, the goal is not until 2030. Like, that gives me plenty of years to go. And so what I'm seeing with companies is they have to make sure they first follow that pathway of really understanding the requirements and making sure they have the data inventory correct and unify that and not just simply go for a different tool buy it in and hope it will solve itself, but rather use what they have. Use the data they have already in the processes. Use the people they already have to that extent. Train them, help them, and then give them that single source of truth to start working on it. And then the other advice I have is um, quality can be the enemy of everything in sustainability. And I'm saying this with care because obviously for regulatory compliance, we have to be precise enough and we have to be able to provide auditable data. But I also see companies struggle 
with being stuck in that granularity approach and not getting to action. Now, the tricky thing is if you want to have buy-in, if you want to have people enjoying working with you, if you want to have collaboration, you need to be able to show them the value. So define what value looks like for your organization. Yeah. Is it more time, more speed, emission safe, reaching the goal, suppliers right to define that, go from there. To, to, I mean, there's a, a big sign up there that says, you know, how many think AI is going to save the world versus yeah. kill the world? Thinking about the whole power, I mean, uh, Virginia in the United States has no more power for data centers. You can't build a data center now in the state of Virginia. Yeah. One of the things that's happening now is there's a lot more uh, nuclear starting to come back online in the United States, which I think is good because I think, again, it's part of the solution. I don't think it's the whole solution, but I think you need to have those diverse other aspects. Where do you see do customers come to Salonis and go, you guys are doing AI. Mm -hmm. Help us understand how to do it more sustainably because they're looking at it and going, the GPUs are burning up all of this if they can get them. Yeah. And that's a supply chain issue for them. Yeah. In a lot of cases, yeah. and their suppliers. How, how did they approach you from that perspective? Mm. So I would say it depends a bit on like who asks you. Um, what what I'm seeing now, we have like recently partnered up with an organization that's called SustainableIT.org, and they're bringing the CIOs to the sustainability table, as I call it. And there we have a lot of discussions around doing AI in an environmentally friendly way, doing it ethically, doing it responsibly. Like, for me, it all comes down to doing it consciously. Um, and I think if we only put it in the hand of the IT people, um, and they might not be fully aware on like what it does to the environment, and we just try and test for whatever reason, that is where it stops. But I see many companies being really focused on what is the value that AI brings? Does it really you know, add something to my business? And it's the same approach that we've used for cost before. Like you wouldn't just spend whatever you have. And I feel like maybe that's an approach we also need for the planet, to be like, why would we spend everything we have just like that? Um, and then training people more on that, you know, awareness around what does it cost to have such a data center. AI has a, has a real cost too. Um, but also don't be afraid, I say, because that would also stop innovation. And we do see AI use cases in sustainability too, and those we have to lean into. One of the things that really struck me when we showed up at your partner day yesterday and you got to get a feel for the experience and the branding and some of the signage was there is an incredible emphasis on sustainability at this event in particular. There's the Earth is Our Future all over the place. There's a who wants to be a billionaire and billionaires cross out. It says breathe clean air. I can imagine a lot of this is coming from your team. It, it, it made me, honestly, it made me feel good both as a technologist but also as a member of this planet and, and a citizen of the Earth. I, I don't think we see enough of this emphasis at scale within a company or within tech events in general, particularly with companies like yours helping enterprises achieve goals in those categories, why is it so important to Solanus and, and why is it such a focus this year in particular? Thank you so much for sharing that because, yes, indeed, that was like a lot of work we put in. And this is a great venue to work with, by the way, because also, actually, the Mesa Minfu has sustainability goals. So we help them achieve those too. Um, I'm lucky. I would say, because at Salonis we started out with sustainability in the right way, meaning we have put it as part of our core value framework. So there's values around, we look for customer value, obvious. The best team wins, team spirit, get it. We own it, which is quite typical for a company like ours, and then Earth is our future. And it came from the idea of like, who are our stakeholders as a company? Customers, for sure, our employees, for sure, our shareholders, yes. but where is the planet? And that's why we made this decision. And while Earth is our future in the beginning was maybe a bit more aspirational compared to the others, it is guiding decisions. And you can bring it up and you can say, is the planet basically sitting at this table? Um, do we make it a part of it? And then you have to take steps towards it. And trust me, it is hard. I mean, there is a lot of change. Events like this are, per definition, probably not the most sustainable thing to do. But you know, within them, you can find good ways 
going into it. And then I just love to see what our customer community is doing with us. You mentioned the billionaire piece. We're running hackathons here. Process where sprint is something that is near and dear to my heart. We had 12 customers yesterday being in little cubicles with like, you know, greenery around it, and they worked five hours fully focused on challenges they have in the sustainability area where they see that process intelligence can help them. And they were all able, after the five hours, to present a live demo of what they have been up to and to find next steps of, of what they're going to do. All supply chain use cases, many in procurement, and the three top teams will present at the finale of Celestere and then everyone can vote on them. And it's, I think, events like that that make it very tangible and everyone can participate and that in itself is also sustainable again. Tangible and achievable. You just yes. mentioned that they were hacking for five hours, not 48 hours or five months or five years, and they were able to achieve palpable impact and ROI. Very excited to see who those final three contestants are. We can actually learn about all of them. But I think that's really incredible, and it speaks to your technology and how quickly it is to see change. I think it's really, gosh, I think it's super exciting. Do you have a favorite? That's a tough one. I know that one team does a very engaging presentation, and I'm not naming them right now because I don't want to kind of you know, <laughs> be in there. But one team, I think, has understood how important it is to have various stakeholders within the company at the table when it comes to sustainability. And it's never just the people that have sustainability in their title. There is the CIO. There is the CEO who provides the budget. There might be the center of excellence we have, and then the procurement person. And like, how can they collaborate and speak the same language? How can they look at the same data? That is super crucial, and there's one team that you know, does that quite well in their final presentation. Ooh, well, I can't wait to see that. I, you said something that's sticking with me now, and, and you said you know, we have to think, or not even pretend it is real, that, that Earth is sitting here at the table with us. I'm envisioning literally a sphere <laughs> of the Earth right there sitting next to you, and I really, I'm going to bring that with me moving forward. I really think that's important since it's generally a, a voiceless entity, although there shows us a lot all the time, but in the NLP sort of sense of the term, since we'll definitely have you on next year to continue chatting about this and see how, particularly how a, AI has advanced ESG goals, but, but how the, even maybe some of the hack winners have applied this in their businesses and, and, and other companies have been inspired by that. What do you hope to be able to say this time next year to Rob and I and the Earth sitting here at the table with you today? So I hope that next year sustainability is not necessarily second seed anymore, but like on the same pace as AI and they actually work hand in hand together. That's my one of the hopes that it's like becoming a bit more front and center. But I also hope that we have seen way more companies making processes work for the planet with like real and tangible results that they're very excited to share. We have this growing community. A lot is possible, um, and we hope we make it very specific so companies are inspired to, to follow that. And so I'm going to share more stories with you next year. Awesome. Anyway, we can't wait to hear all of them. Thank you so much for joining thank us you. this afternoon, and thank you, Rob. And thank all of you for tuning in to our two days of fantastic coverage here at Salona Cellosphere in Munich, Germany. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching The Cube, the leading source for enterprise tech news. Mm -hmm.